Check this out. So I've got Kaylee Linux running inside VMware, and inside Kaylee Linux I am listening for a connection using Netcat on port 4443. On the other hand, I am running my Exodia OS. Now check out what's going to happen when I try to open the terminal on the Exodia OS. So I opened the terminal, and you see I did nothing else, right? Now let's move to our Kali Linux and see what happened. You see we've got a reverse connection from our Exodia OS, and now we can do whatever we want. I did nothing very special, just opened a terminal on the target computer, nothing else, and we got a connection. I did this by using something called reverse shells, and today we're going to dive deep into these suckers. We're going to see different use cases of these things and how they actually work. So subscribe to the channel and like this video if you're new here, and let's get started. So I did that by using this one-liner in this file. This one-liner is a reverse shell one-liner. Before we understand how this one-liner got executed using this file, let's first understand how reverse shells work, all right? So a reverse shell is a technique used in hacking, where the victim's computer initiates a connection back to the attacker's machine. It's like asking your friend to call you instead of you calling him, right? This is very useful because many networks block incoming connections but allow outgoing ones, making it easier to bypass firewalls. The attacker sets up a listener. We can do it in multiple ways. We can even make our own one. But in this case, we use Netcat. We make our victim run a command or a script that connects back to the listener, bypassing the firewall and giving us full control of the victim's terminal. We can execute any command on the victim's computer as if we were physically present. If we have a look at the reverse shell command over here, We'll break it down a bit, and then I'll show you some more reverse shell commands and more cool tricks with these things. So, in the first part of our command, you can see the word bash, then dash C, and then after that we've got our actual reverse shell command in quotes. If you carefully look at the command, you can see words like TCP, along with your IP address and port. It guides the victim's computer to connect back to this IP address through this port, via a TCP connection. We've got to put the attacker's IP address in here and the port on which we're listening for a successful connection. So what I did there was put this command in the Z shell configuration file. It's a hidden file located in the home directory and is used to load user-specific settings and configuration every time a new interactive shell session is started. This means whatever we put in that configuration file will be executed whenever we start a new terminal session. Let's understand this practically. So this is my ZSH configuration file, and I've opened it with the nano text editor. At the end, I've put the ls command. Now let's save this and reopen the terminal and see what happens. You see that all of our files are listed, and that's what the ls command does. So this means if we put that reverse shell command in this configuration file, it'll be executed too. That's exactly what I did. It's actually a persistence technique, that hackers use to gain persistent access to the victim's computer. So, if they lose access to the victim's computer somehow, they can connect back later. Anyways, this isn't our topic. Our topic is reverse shells. So, that was just an example of how a reverse shell can be used. But there are multiple use cases for these, and reverse shells don't only come with bash. You can create reverse shell commands using different languages like Python, there's a cool website, actually, named revshells.com. This website provides you with different reverse shells for different languages. Let's have a look at it. You'll get a link to this site in the description. What you have to do is put your IP address and port in here as the attacker, and it'll generate different reverse shell commands you can use. You can see there are a few from Bash, C, Netcat, Perl, and even Python. Let's copy this Python one and see how it works. So here it is in my nano text editor, and I've broken it down into parts. Python actually allows us to run its code directly using this dash C flag, without putting it in a file and running it manually. If you take a look at the code inside the quotes, the first line imports different modules like socket, which is used to make a connection, and subprocess and O's, which are used to interact with the operating system. After that, we create a socket object, and then in the third line, we provide our IP address and port. If we take a look at the last two lines, you can see that we've imported PTY. The PTY module is used to interact with the terminal, 
like with the keyboard and mouse, and in the last line, we're asking PTY to spawn a bash shell. So this was another example of a reverse shell with Python. We can even create our own. But we're not going to do that in this video. If this video gets a good response from you, I'll surely make one teaching you how you can create your own reverse shell and listener using Python. Anyways, reverse shells don't only come in the form of a command. We can also find reverse shells in the form of a whole file. If you type web shells in your Kali Linux, you'll find different types of reverse shells. Let's move to the PHP directory and see what's there. You see, here's a file named reverseshell.php. We can open this file using nano. And if you scroll a bit down, you'll find places where you can put in your IP address and change the ports. It can be very useful when we find a vulnerability in a website's upload system. We can upload this reverse shell and get access to the targeted system. So, this was a fun little video on reverse shells. Hope you guys liked it. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe and tell me the topic you want the next video on in the comments. Stay happy and stay blessed, and I'll see you in the next one.